Hi, on this video, we're going to see how to combine the features of the calculator app and the graphing app to solve questions from the IGCC question paper. So this video is going to be useful for only students who are taking IGCC International Math. And this video is not at a basic level. So if those of you haven't seen my earlier videos, the beginner level videos on calculator app and graphing app, the link to those videos are somewhere up there. I will also make a mention to those link in the description below. We are going to solve questions on functions from the October, November 2020 session. Let's get cracking. So this is question number seven from the first variant uh, of October, November 2020. And the function defined is uh, absolute value of x cubed minus uh, one over x. And we need to graph that. We need to sketch that between negative 1.5 and 1.5 x values. So let's jump to our calculator screen. And uh, on the calculator screen, I'm going to uh, define the function f of x, okay, f of x, sorry. And uh, control on the key to the right inside of nine. And to get the uh, <clears throat> symbol for the absolute value, you go and hit this template key. So you get that, x cubed, we use this one. And we put in minus one by x, control division sign to get the template for the division, one by x. and you hit enter, that should give me that the function is defined. And we want to go and graph and it says, write down the equation of this in total. Just by looking at it algebraically, you should be able to say that, you know, this function is not going to be defined at x equals zero. So even intuitively, you need to know where is going to be a problem, all right? So if you haven't seen that video of mine on asymptotes, I'll link that on the description below. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit control doc to insert a graph page. And now, uh, before we do that, I as I said before, let's go and change the settings. Okay, so this is negative 1.5, and this is 5, and this is 1.5, and this is negative 5. Uh, it's a good habit to first uh, make the window settings as given in the question paper so that you can graph it accordingly, make the sketch of the graph accordingly. And then uh, you can hit tab to bring back the entry line, and here you can just enter f of x, and that should give you the graph of the function that's defined. Interesting graph. And as you can see, the asymptote is clearly at x equals zero. There's a discontinuity. There's a break in the graph, okay, uh, for value of x not defined at x equals zero. So uh, just enter that way. Key features of the graph need to be indicated on the, uh, on, the, on the sketch in the exam. So you need to figure out what those values are. And let's do that quickly. I'm just going to go and analyze graph. That's the zero happening there. So, and that's at negative zero. And you can do the same thing for the other zero here. So once you figure that out, you can include the key features. If the graph had a y-intercept, you'd have included that also in the sketch. So uh, when it says sketch, as it says here, this word sketch, make sure the key features also indicated and copy the graph as you see there. Uh, so the question where it says, write down the equation of the asymptote that's happening at x is equal to zero because that's the value where uh, the function is not defined. Um, solve the equation for fx is equal to two uh, for values of x between negative 1.5 and uh, zero, okay? Uh, so let's get back to our calculator. Negative 1.5 and zero is this part of the graph. We're just going to enter tab and say, you know, fx is equal to two, that's another graph. So what, what happens is that's the second graph, fx is equal to two, and we're looking at these intersection points because that's the values of x where you want to find the solution. And we find the points of intersection by just going to geometry, points and lines, uh, intersection points, choose the two graphs that you look interested in. And yes, there are more than two uh, points of intersection. Those other two are here also, but uh, they've asked for the answer. In the question, they've asked for the values of x in between negative 1.5 and zero. And so the two values we are looking for is negative 1.4 and negative 0 0.475. Let me just copy down as it is. So x is equal to negative, 1.4 and uh, negative 0.475, all right? Uh, solve the inequality, f of x is, uh, f of x plus x squared is less than or equal to two. Now we've graphed f of x, all right? So we've got the function. So we can just rewrite that inequality as f of x is less than or equal to two minus x squared, can't we? Which means if we graph this as another function, okay? This can be something like say g, then it's just about comparing when is f of x less than or equal to g of x, which means when is f of x, when is the graph of f of x below g of x for those values of uh, x ne between negative 1.5 and 1.5. Shall we do that? All right, so I'm going to define uh, two minus x squared as g of x on my calculator. So you're back on the calculator. 
and I uh, let's go to the calculator page. And here I can define the function g of x as, uh, what is that? 2 minus x squared. And I hit enter, that should give me done. I go to the graphing page, and here when I hit tab, I can just say g of x, and that should give me the graph. Now, because there's too much clutter, we can hide the graph. Uh, you can hit right click and hide the graph. Uh, right click uh, on your handheld would be control menu, but you can also hit tab and go back to all the function list. And here you can click uh, arrow and you can, you know, go up to the graph that is f of x is equal to two, uh, y is equal to two. And you can just uh, disable that and, uh, or hide that and that's gone, but it doesn't hide all the other points. So if you want to hide the points, uh, the coordinates still will be still visible. So I'm just going to go and delete because we have done the information right now. I'm just going to go and yeah, I'm, I'm hitting right click to get this menu. The right click on your handle, like I said, is um, control menu, right? Uh, so last point, there you go. Uh, the black graph is a graph of two minus X squared. And we're looking at the inequality. When is F of X, the blue graph below the black graph? And you can see it's below in that for those values of X and for those values of below. And again, we need to find the point of intersection to, you know, accurately describe when is the blue graph below the black graph. So let's go and find the point of intersection again using geometry, points and lines, intersection points. And I click the black graph and the blue graph and I get all the coordinates of the points of intersection. Can you see that? This is the second. This helps to just rearrange and make sure that you rearrange these things properly uh, so that you, know, you can read it correctly. <clears throat> so I'm just going to rearrange. So, between negative 1.15 and negative 0.536, you can see that the blue graph is below. That means f of x is less than 2 minus x squared. Uh, in the same way, uh, between 0.536 and 1.15, the blue graph is again below, which means f of x is uh, less than or equal to g of x. So, you can say that for values of x greater than negative 1.15 and less than 0, negative 0 0.536, and uh, 0 0.536, am I, is this visible? All right, and 1.15. Now on variant two, they had two questions uh, on functions. Normally they do have two questions on functions, but uh, on the first variant, there was only one question on uh, functions. I don't know why. So this is very similar to the first question. There's a cubic uh, uh, function given this time. I mean to graph between negative, uh, Three to three again. They're using the word sketch. So as I said, make sure that you're um, you can make a rough sketch on the on the paper as you can see what you have graphed on the calculator. But make sure that you indicate all the key features. All right. So let's switch to the graph page. And as always, I uh, would encourage you all to you know uh, insert a new problem for every new question. I like entering the function on the calculator page, uh, defining the function on the calculator page. Um, you may choose to enter it directly on the graph page. <clears throat> I, I like this method. So x cubed minus 5x, uh, not r, it's 5x plus 3, and it should say done. Now I go and insert a graph page, and it'll give me the function entry line, but we just hit escape, come out of it, and the first thing you should do is to fix the window settings. This is going from negative 3, uh, hit tab to go to the next entry, that's 15. Hit tab to come to this next entry, that's 3. Hit tab again and it'll come to this one, that's negative 10. And our grid is ready, all right? Uh, now we want to just sketch the graph, so I just go tab and I just f of x because it was defined on uh, the first page, the calculator page, and that's my graph, right? So you can find out the different features, um, different ways to find the features, right? You want the uh, x-intercepts and the y-intercept this time, this maxima, this minima. So I'll just use the trace option. And uh, uh, there directly it shows me the y-intercept, but you know, you, if it was somewhere else, you can use the arrow keys to come to the y-intercept. And when it's at the y-intercept, it will say, it'll indicate y-intercept, you know, and then you can hit enter uh, so that it registers the value there. And then you can use the arrow key again. And when it comes onto the uh, x-intercept, it will say zero or x-intercept and you can hit enter and it will register the value there. And you can do the same thing as it goes to the uh, other intercept there. And there you go. Do the same thing uh, as it comes to the left-hand side. Actually, you can do even with the minimum, you know, can you see that? Oh, the maximum. It comes to the maximum. You don't need... I think this is one of the good things of... Uh, but yeah, you have to keep... There you go. Uh, 
Now that it's done, you can copy these things. The reason I'm showing these different features is because don't just copy the graph, also show the different key points of the graph. Okay, so this was this intercept, this was this intercept. Be careful how you position the coordinates. It, it shouldn't get messy, but at the same time, you shouldn't lose the information, okay? Uh, now, when you come back to the uh, paper, make sure that you do the sketch, even if a rough sketch is fine, but the key features, the x-intercept, y-intercept, do include it there. Uh, here they said, find the coordinates of the local minimum point. I just had the local maximum point, but no worries, we can come back to the graph. And this time, let's use the other feature. Let's go to analyze graph, pick out the minimum. The minimum is somewhere here. And this is what I meant, you know, like uh, it can get lost. So you need to keep a track of what is the minimum and what are the uh, intercepts. And especially if you're using the handle where the uh, display screen is really, really tiny, it can be, get a little tricky. So be careful how you're using this information. Record it immediately. I think that's a good idea. Record it immediately onto your paper so you can see the minimum is happening at 1.29, comma, negative 1.3. So that is uh, 1.29. Uh, comma negative 1.3. This is a good habit if you record it directly here onto your paper. Describe fully the symmetry of the diagram. The symmetry of the diagram, the cubic graph you all know is symmetric about the origin, rotational symmetry about the origin. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the graph here, you know that the origin is shifted to that y intercept, you know. Uh, so the parent cubic function was going through the origin. I hope you all have studied that part. It goes through the origin. Uh, but now this is a transformed cubic uh, graph and it goes through that point, the y-intercept is now 0, 3. So you can mention that as a center of rotation. Uh, so when you write the answer, you should say, uh, because you need to give as much details as possible when you hear that word, when you read that word described fully. So you can say rotational, uh, rotational symmetry about, uh, what is that, 0, comma three um, and uh, through 180 degrees, whether you say 180 degrees or negative 180 degrees, it's the same thing, all right? Uh, the next part of the question, g of x is a new function are defined to x minus one and the first uh, sub part to part d is solve the equation fx is equal to gx. We've seen this in the earlier videos, treat each of them as a separate graph and whether it says equal to, it's basically trying to find the point of intersection of the two graphs. So let's do that on our calculator screen. Here we go. So I'm going to go and uh, uh, define the function g in the same way. So control assign and I have, what was it, 2x minus 1 and hit enter and it gives me done. Come here. This is going to get a little crowded with these uh, coordinates. So let me just go and uh, delete them. All right. Uh, maybe even this point. I don't know whether that's... I don't know whether that's going to be pointed, but anyway, we can do that again later. You get what I'm saying, right? It gets a little, uh, um, I don't know what's the right word. It gets, it gets a little clustered, not cluttered. What's the right word? Yeah, it gets, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It gets a little, what's the word? It gets a little crowded in there. So, you know, better to clear it off and then try and enter the new function. G of X is that line, okay, that red line. And we want to solve. And as we saw, solving literally means finding the point of intersection. And now you can go and find the point of intersection by going to geometry, points and lines, intersection points, choose the two graphs. And there we have it. Oh, there are three points. There's one more here. So it's good, okay, because I just thought it was those two points and these are the three points here, uh, negative 2.9, 0 0.603 and 2.29. So, and the good habit, like I said, to clear the crowd before it gets crowded, note it down right away, okay? So, oh, they have given three different uh, spaces here to enter the three values of X. So you can put down the three values of X as, what was that, negative 2.9, uh, 0 0.603 and 2.29. Okay, so there you go. Use your answers to part one to solve the inequality fx is greater than gx. Now, before we do this, let me just quickly explain what this is all about. When you have two graphs, just two graphs, okay? Uh, let's use different colors. Uh, two graphs like this, can you see this? fx, gx, and that's gx. If you just see the two graphs like that, 
you know that fx is above gx and therefore in some way intuitively you can say that fx is going to be always greater than g of x right because it's above you're using the same idea except that this time g of x or any second function if it were a graph something like that then it's becoming and then if you ask the same question let me just label that as g of x that's your g of x and there if you ask the question when is the graph of f of x above or greater than g of x when is it above so if you use the same logic and we say that all right you know what they're intersecting here and they're intersecting here so those should be some key points let's just call that p1 and p2 then f of x is the red graph okay f of x is a red graph f of x happens to be above the green graph f of x happens to be above or greater than g of x in that region right in that region the red graph is above otherwise the green graph, graph is above so on the left hand side of p1 the green graph that is g is above uh, the red graph and on the right hand side of p2 uh, the green graph is above the red graph which means the red graph which is f of x is above or greater than gx in that region only so in order to answer inequalities like this you can just say x is less than p2 greater than p1 so the points of intersection also plays an important role when we do uh, questions on inequality and i thought i should explain this because there have been many questions on the inequality solving the inequality graphically and so when you look at the inequality here that uh, the function f of x which is my blue graph and the function uh, g of x which is my red graph when is it above when is f of x did they say above below yeah when is f of x greater than gx uh, the blue graph is greater than gx between these two points of intersection and after that point can you see that after that point so between negative 2.9 and uh, 0 0.063 f of x the blue graph is above means greater than below is less than okay so here it's less than because it's below these two points of intersection so you're looking at the points of intersection and identifying the region where the blue graph is above the red graph so clearly in between negative 2.9 and uh, what was this point? Oh, I moved it here again. Learn from my mistakes. Between uh, negative two point nine and zero point six zero three, blue graph is above the red graph. And after, after this point of intersection, after two point two nine, the blue graph goes above the red graph. So that should be a solution. And we will write it like this. Let me switch. We will write it like this. Let's we'll say x for values of x uh, greater than negative two point nine and less than zero point. 603 and when x is greater than 2.29 is it 2.29 or 2.9 oh that's correct 2.29 and that one is 2. negative 2.9 cool